Hey Truck Tub guys and gals, I had to come over to this booth with Green Tech because as you know, I just crashed my freaking Lightning and I'm all worried about what's gonna happen to the poor thing if they're gonna write it off. Now, one of the big challenges that I've been having here is the moment I mention anything about the batteries and about uh, anybody uh, you know, getting rid of the batteries or batteries being recycled or anything happening to them after the end of life in an EV, out come all the FUD chuckers. Well, they're all gonna end up inside a garbage can and they're gonna pollute the environment, blah, blah, blah. So we already know that those batteries are backed up by extremely long warranties to begin with, but when those come to an end, Oh, there's a solution, and we're sitting at one of those solutions right now with Green Tech and Jax. Jax, thanks so much for coming on Truck Tech pleasure. EV. Absolute Seth. pleasure. And tell me a bit about what the frick all we got all these batteries around. I haven't been electrocuted yet. Yeah. I guess that's good. <laughs> uh, so tell me a bit about what you're doing, what your story is. For sure. So basically, we started back in uh, 2012 with uh, Tim Rosmoski, our CEO. His sister's Prius battery went bad, and it was in his dad's garage for months and months on end. Right. And they're like, got to find a solution for this. So they rebuilt the battery, and that kind of sparked an idea for Green Tech Auto and the remanufacturing of batteries, right? Yes. So our first year in business, we were just kind of doing, as you see online now, just the cell replacement, right? And then quickly, we realized that's kind of like a short-term Band-Aid fix. Then we went to full remanufacturing of the batteries. And starting then, it was just, you know, Priuses, and Civics. Now we're doing over 200 different types of batteries for virtually every make and model all across the uh, United States of America, 34 locations, and now in uh, Vancouver, Canada, Coquitlam. Wow, that's fantastic. These are right here at home. Yeah, right here at home. Wow, yeah. okay, so I gotta ask you something about this. Now, as far as the battery content that we see out there, this end of life batteries, would you say that 90% of them end up in a garbage bin? Not at all. <laughs> They're too valuable. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's also, you have these, you know, these big recycling companies that will get tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. But the thing is, is we can pay more per battery than they can, right? Because we have more purposes. We remanufacture, we repurpose, and then finally we recycle. We see so many company, companies recycling the battery when there's still so much life in the battery. Yeah, right? yeah. So what helps us is our locations, our 34 locations where people get their batteries installed, or actually battery drop-off locations as well. Right. So when we get a battery in, we're not like, okay, let's head it to recycle. Like, okay, what can be reused in this battery pack, right? Right. How many cells are good? And if they're, if they're not good enough to go back into a car, can they have a second life in energy storage mm -hmm. or EV charging? Yeah. So there's lots of different use for these batteries instead of just recycling them right away. One of the big questions that I have is in that recycling process, when it comes to that end of life, most of the battery packs still have a lot of life in them for Absolutely. secondary uses. So what's the primary secondary use that we that you're seeing? For sure. So after if remanufacture is not available, for example, we have a partnership with Kiwi Charge. So they're using our, our Nissan Leaf modules to power their mobile EV chargers. So that's a big thing. And then you also have people doing their own DIY home energy storage systems at their yes. cabin or their house. Yep. So for example, you know, say a place is 12 cents per kilowatt hour during daytime for power. After 11 p.m., it drops down to two cents, so they charge up the batteries during uh, nighttime, discharge during daytime, pay 10 bucks a month on power. So we're seeing a lot in the home energy storage space, which is great for you know the average person who has a cabin or a house and wants to save money on power. And then also EV conversions is big, right? So people using our batteries, whether it's Tesla modules, Nissan Leaf modules, ID4 modules are big yeah, now for that. Right. So there's so many different uses when it comes to you know EV conversions and stuff like that. So we don't exactly fit the batteries to exactly what their needs, but we're more of like a bulk wholesale, wholesale supplier for those companies. So what are you finding as far as when you get a battery pack in, how much of that battery ends up on average being salvageable? Do you have like a percentage concept of, okay, how much you have coming in the door, how much of that going back out the door is repurposed? Do you have a percentage kind of guesstimate at that? Yeah, great question. So it, it really it depends of like, if it's coming from a, a customer's vehicle, if it's coming from a scrap yard. Because if it's coming from a scrap yard, you don't know if it's been there for three years in the rain or where it's, what, what's been happening. With right, it. right. For, if it's for a customer car, let's say if, it, if it's a Prius and there's like 28 cells in a Prius, you can only have like sometimes even one or two cells out of the 28 that are bad. So you have right. uh, you know, 26, 25 good cells left in the battery pack. When it comes to percentage, you can't really give an exact percentage yet, but when it comes to recycling the batteries, about 90% of the material is gonna get recovered, which is great because you know once gas goes into the air, 
that's it. And the story, it's not a material anymore. Right. So batteries, right? It can it can it can hold charge. Yeah. It can discharge, but also holds material. And yes. that's what Green Tech is really trying to strive for is get as close as we can to that circular economy of yes. remanufacturing the batteries, repurposing them, and then yep. when they're at that EOL, the end of life, using that material to build more batteries. So we're not right. having to keep mining and mining, mining and mining and mining. And mining. Yep. So that's an, an interesting uh, end of that as well, is you've got so many different varieties, so many different uh, factors, there's no standardization by any of the OEMs into how these things are packaged. Everything's proprietary, some are glued together, some are structural, some are modular, some are inside separate modular containments, some are prismatic, some are cylindrical. I mean, holy crap. So to have an operation that can deal with all those different sides, do you find that you are reaching a point or the industry's reaching a point where it's easier and easier to be able to extract that? I mean, if you get a glue pack in, and yeah. you've got three bad cells, what the heck do you do with that? Exactly, and, and, that, and that's a big part of it. So, you know, when it comes to like, like a Prius module, it's pretty easy to recycle. Yes. When you're looking at a Tesla and you've got all this glue, all this different stuff, to extract the black mass through all that, it's a lot of processing, which yeah. is hard for the machine. And technology is going to have to evolve, evolve, and evolve because you know uh, batteries are evolving, right? And people mm -hmm. say, you know come to us and say, "Is there one battery that fits all?" And we say, "No," and there there never will be because batteries are wanting to evolve. You know, people want to have um, a, a battery that lasts, for example, a million miles, right? Yep. But a lot of people don't understand is the battery can last a million miles, right? The, the cells. But there's so many other components in the battery, temperature sensors, right? Mm -hmm. BMSs, right? Yep. We had a girl come in the other day, 2022 Tesla Model 3. She couldn't charge it. Battery was fine. The cells were great, nothing wrong. BMS, the BMS was fried. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. and, and that's something else that I think is, is, is playing a big role in the availability and the, uh, the ability to manufacture, uh, yes. to remanufacture, repurpose all of our batteries, that, that massive inventory, and get into that cycle. They estimate, uh, I don't remember who it was that recently did the study, that said by 2030 we could have a full uh, cyclical market where we're only like 10% at most of our raw materials are coming from mining because the rest can be circular. Because unlike so many things, so much of this can be recycled. Is that correct? Like you're able yeah. to get so much out of it. Yeah, usually they say about 90%, right? Yeah. So it's like if you take that percentage and then you, you, you add like, you know, 10 years, 20 years, that 10% that you said, that's going to go down to 8%, to 6% until yeah. it's 0%. Yeah. And then that's when we're really going to see the EV boom, you know, because people are saying like, you see all these mines and EV mining, like it, 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 it had to happen, right? Mm -hmm. We have to get the materials. So once you get the materials, they stay as materials, which That's is great, right. you know? So All you're fighting is the law of dendrites. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's that's quite something else. Are you finding, like, if, if there was something that you wish would happen yourself from that perspective of bringing everything back to life, getting through that end of life cycle and, 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 and you know, having a reincarnation of your battery packs or bringing those materials back to market, what's the most, you mentioned, for example, uh, was it the Leaf or the Prius? Yep. All of those are modular. Mm -hmm. And even with what BYD is doing in, in China with the prismatic uh, blade yep. cells, they're incredibly easy to remanufacture. Mm -hmm. And they're also incredibly easy to service. So are you leaning yourself saying the best? We, we always hear about the cheapest way of manufacturing for the company to make a profit. Mm -hmm. But that's not always the best for the end user. Exactly. What's best for the end cycle? For sure, so you know, obviously this industry is so super, super young. So yeah. when it comes to what you said about glue, very good point, like there's glue and there's many other things that makes the battery hard to recycle. Yeah. And since the industry is still so, so young, we're going to have to get to that point where it's like, okay, we tried to recycle it, here's the problem, now OEMs are going to have to find out, okay, we got to make a better solution for this problem. Right. That's number one. Number two is making a standardization for recycling. Right, yeah. because a, a lot of the batteries, for example, in the UK right now, because we're opening up in the UK, you have to actually, like scrapyards have to pay to recycle the batteries. So in, in United States of America and in Canada, we're buying batteries, right? We buy batteries on people. But in some countries, it's to a state where there, there's literally like uh, scrapyards full of batteries. You know, Tesla, right. Prius, there's so many different types that they're stocking up, stocking up, stocking up. Instead of just sitting, they could be in someone's car. They could be, you know, used for energy storage systems, and, and there's so many other uses. And although, 
you know, let's say in a battery pack, there's gonna be a lot of cells that are good. You still need to really take it down to that cell level because there's so many other things, electrical components and different things that can go wrong with these batteries. Right, right. That there's, it's, it's not like a one solution fix all. Of course, we'd all love to go on eBay and buy a Prius module for 25 bucks and we end the story. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's just not where we're at right now at yeah. the state. So we had one guy, he had a Prius and he was like, you know what, I don't want to pay uh, $1,500 or $1,200 to replace my Prius battery. He replaced four modules, and then after a couple months, he's like, dude, I just give me the whole battery. Give me the whole battery. Mm -hmm. So for the average consumer, it may be cheaper, but it's not a very sustainable solution. Long -term. Right, right. We're now going to sodium. We're now seeing a movement to LFP, mm -hmm. which don't have thermal runaway issues. Yep, yep. So all this bunk about batteries starting on fire, well, see you later, alligator. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, we're hearing all these things about cobalt and child mining, but nobody mentions their laptop or their smart smartphone, mm -hmm. which are the number one drawers of cobalt, exactly. causing all that uh, child labor. Uh -huh. uh, so are you seeing that evolution as it evolves because you're going to be dealing with different chemistries? So does that, are you kind of future-proofing your own business because we're seeing this shift in even the batteries themselves that you're recycling because your whole recycling network is going to be changing. Yeah, exactly. All the time as uh -huh. these batteries keep moving from one chemistry to the next. And, and there's so many, like, there's only, there's only not too many now, but in the future, who knows what can happen, right? Right. So right now it's like, the problem is, is uh, a hybrid battery, you know, like a uh, hybrid battery, when it gets recycled, you have to have a hybrid battery recycling machine. For EV battery, it's kind of different, right? Yes. Like, you know, you have nickel metal and you have lithium ion, right? Yes. So it's like two different kind of machines. When it comes to a point in the future where it's one standardized machine for all batteries, that's going to help it out a lot, right? Yeah. And, and the great thing is, it's like, for you know, a lot of these batteries, you're going to have to disassemble them to the cell level, something where you can just like throw it in there and it will basically extract all the materials from a broader level, that's gonna be, that's gonna be really amazing. And also, you know, bringing car companies, bringing manufacturers to a collection of like, okay, what do we do with these batteries? Like, we need a standardization of, and that's why we think we're so useful because we have 34 locations. Not only battery insulation, but also drop off, right? So the average shop who has a couple of priests laying around or a junkyard that has 20 Teslas, they can put those batteries to use, you wow, know? Right. It's not their, their useless. It, they can be reused, right? Right. Repurposed, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. So ba basically, from, from that perspective, we're kind of in the Betamax versus VCR versus Laserdisc era <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> of, yeah. of, of batteries, and nobody's figured out MP3 and streaming yet. So, <laughs> so we're on the road, yeah, literally, we're getting there. Yeah. To, to get there. Thank you so much for Absolutely. all your time. It's a pleasure that pleasure. we came across your booth. Absolutely. I'm really impressed with this, and I think it's a message that a lot of people who are worried about EVs and they hear all this negativity, mm -hmm. they can know that from start to finish that full loop cycle is not only right now far more efficient in the, per, the use of energy than making a, an internal combustion vehicle. Absolutely. The end is also now slowly being looped. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have the, that cycle continue after the vehicle right back into it. Absolutely. So I'm very impressed with what you're doing. Thanks again awesome. for coming on Trucked Up, man. Thank you. It was so awesome to sit down and talk to Green Tech because it answers a lot of questions for a lot of EV truck folk out there about what's going to happen down the road. But it's just a little tiny piece of the puzzle. There's so much going on in closing that loop. And there's so much misunderstanding about batteries to begin with. These things can last for decades. What it takes to push my truck up a hill is a massive amount of energy and a lot of efficiency out of those batteries. But when that efficiency degrades over quite a long period of time, that same amount of energy density, that same amount of efficiency isn't needed to store power for my house or, or to store power for solar power or wind power or for mobile EV charging like Jax men mentioned. There's so many multiple applications for these things after their use inside an EV. So that means there's decades upon decades that can come out of those single battery packs before they end up being recycled. And the biggest thing that I wanted to wrap up with all of this is that the only thing that's really breaking down inside the lithium ion battery is the dendrites that build up. And I'm no great uh, genius when it comes to this stuff. I'm just a dumbass with a truck 
but it goes something like this. You've got your anode, your cathode, and there's basically a charge and discharge that goes on back and forth these cycles. And when it charges and discharges over a great period of time, what are called dendrites build up, I believe in the electrolyte, basically the film between those two parts of the battery that are going back and forth. So as those things build up, they become less efficient. But outside of that, that little tiny thin film Everything else is perfectly fine. So that's why we're able to recycle so much more of this product than so many other products that we say we recycle. It's estimated that by 2030, some say 2035, because we've seen a slowdown in EV development. I don't know about that. If you go ask anybody in Europe or Asia, it is likely that we will see a full closed loop where only a small fraction of the material required are going to need to come from raw mining. It will come from recycled mining. That is absolutely fantastic. Hey, if you like episodes like this, because I'm going to dive into this kind of stuff deeper and deeper as we go and learn more about how you can get totally trucked up, learn everything about your truck, you'll want to like, subscribe, and click that bell notification icon down below, or join my Patreon channel, or click the YouTube membership and become a member. You'll be able to watch all these videos in advance, and I do produce one exclusive video every month for my members. So if you'd like to do that, please consider becoming a member. I can't thank you enough for supporting the channel. Once again, as always, thanks for watching.